sliceofsci-fi.com. Put on your thinking caps, kids, and play along with the gang. Hey, it's trivia time! Well, hello, Slicers. It's Kurt in St. George here. As I grew up, I watched way too much television. And I only lived about a block away from an independent movie theater, where every weekend I could see all kinds of trashy films. So over the years, I have amassed a huge quantity of geek knowledge of bad films. You may wonder how you, too, can gain this knowledge without wasting as much time as I did. Well, there are some shortcuts you can take. So I'm going to play you a few clips from some of these shortcut films. Here's the first one, now. Then is now. A lot of people dismiss his films as low-budget trash. So what? In fact, his Plan 9 from Outer Space is widely considered one of the worst films ever made. Understatement of the year. But all of his films are hysterically serious and madly autobiographical. One is always considered mad. One discover something that others cannot grasp. Ed Wood made movies like nobody else. They're cheap, poorly acted, ineptly assembled, but never dull. That was Gary Owens as a narrator in a documentary about Ed Woods Jr. entitled Ed Wood Look Back in Angora from 1994. I can remember growing up in Los Angeles and watching a lot of odd movies on Channel 58, a UHF station, and catching Glenn or Glenda, Ed's uh, semi-autobiographical film about himself uh, being a transvestite. And I remember thinking, what the hell is this? It was kind of like watching a train wreck in slow motion. It was really bizarre, badly made, badly acted, but you couldn't stop watching it. Fortunately, you don't have to watch all of Ed's films. You can learn about them in this uh, one hour documentary. Here's the next shortcut. I saw that we could create a world around the concept of midnight, that at 12 o'clock, a different world of movie going took place. You can't make a cult film intentionally. It doesn't work. It's the audience that creates a cult. It's not the, it's not the filmmaker. There were so few real midnight hits. I mean, if you were a hit, you played 10 years. It was El Topo, Pink Flamingos, The Harder They Come, and Rocky Horror, the biggest of all. We were talking to the screen. We were acting out the movie, and we had the props. We were taking over the movie and making it part of our lives. You heard several people in that clip, including director John Waters, director of Pink Flamingos and many other films, in a documentary called Midnight Movies, From the Margin to the Mainstream, from 2005. And this documentary claims that six low-budget films, which came out between 1970 and 77, which were shown, generally, <laughs> only at midnight, transform the way films are made and watched. Get ready, here comes our final trivia shortcut of the day. Moviegoers were not used to seeing women doing action at all. And even if they're little mousy girls at the beginning, by the end they're toting two machine guns and shooting down with scads of guys. Female guerrillas. Machete maiden action. I asked the army to supply me with three helicopter gunships to be there at nine in the morning. And the captain in charge said, I apologize for being late, but we were a hundred miles north strafing and bombing rebels. We will now change to blank ammunition. Excellent idea, I thought. What sold the Blood Island movies to American audiences was the blood, breasts, and beasts. The three Bs. From the late 1960s into the 1980s, there were a large number of low-budget movies, some of which were science fiction, horror, or fantasy, which were made in the Philippines, but for the American audience, primarily for drive-in audiences and second-run movie theaters. And the people you heard talking about those movies were in a film called Machete Maidens Unleashed from 2010. 
And though this documentary has a lot about Roger Corman in it, it's really about all the filmmakers who plied their trade in the Philippines back then. I highly recommend it. Well, that's all for Shortcuts to Trivia. I think I'll revisit this subject again in the future. I believe there's at least one or two more films that would be worthwhile covering. Until then, this is Kurt from St. George, signing off. SliceofSciFi.com